Hey everybody, it's Allison Haikila. Thanks so much for joining me today. It is officially spooky season, which is my favorite season of the year. Of course, I make Halloween cards all year round or spooky things all year round because that's just my style. But we're going to do one specifically for Halloween of 2023. So I have the spooky forest backdrop from Lawn Fawn. I'm crazy about this die set. It has a ton of really cool things in it, but most importantly, it has this tree, this, this set of trees here. Truthfully, as I said in my unboxing video, I'm going to use this all year. It isn't necessarily spooky to me unless you're making a spooky scene, but this is going to be great for the entire year. So I pre-cut it out of black cardstock, which is tough to see on my black glass mat. So there it is there, and we are going to make a super shiny background with a moon to get started. So I have, I think that this bag is from like a teacher supply store. It came with all of these really thick plastic shapes. There's hearts and there's speech bubbles and there's balloons and there's all sorts of crazy stuff. So check out a local um, school supply store if you have any by you. But I've got this perfect circle a great size for a moon. I cut out a piece of smooth Bristol cardstock and I sprayed the back of this with pixie spray because we don't want it to move around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my trees here just kind of hovering and I'm going to figure out where I want my moon to be and I think that that's probably probably a good spot. I think that that works. Maybe we'll scooch it over a little bit just a touch. Yeah I think that's good that's going to wind up sitting there just like that. So we're going to press this down. I'm going to move these things out of the way so that I don't spray them with anything. And now I've got some old chipboard. This was like, you know when you get a pack of 25 sheets of scrapbook paper, this chipboard that's always in the back, that's what I use. I use it to spray things. I've got another piece that I'm putting back here so I don't spray my water bottle or anything else that's back there. Okay, now I have my fireworks spray. And these are like a beautiful set of pigmented color that has mica in it. So when you spray it, it's super shiny. It looks amazing. And there's a whole bunch of colors. There's just, there's so many. And they're available all the time. So this is Sweet Plum, Danube Blue, and Tuxedo Black. I've been shaking them up quite a bit so you can't actually see the mica that's in there. But let me grab a different one. This one is Cottage Ivy, and you can see that it's dark here. That's the colorant, and then the mica is down here. So you shake them up like this really, really well, and then we're going to just start spraying. Just like this, all over. And I like to keep them on their side when I'm working with them because then the mica doesn't just go to the bottom. And I didn't clean this one really well. So we have to clean that out. Let me do that real quick. Okay, I clean that out. There we go. Now we've got a spray going. Clean it again. Add some more blue in here. And I'm also going to add a little bit of that tuxedo black just to deepen what we have going on here. Okay, that is a lot of color. I'm going to just kind of shift this around a little bit, get it to spread, because we really want this whole thing to be covered with that glorious shimmer. And what we can do is add a little bit of water, and that will help some of it move a little bit more too. You can see how it's spreading out. This is looking nice but then the hard part happens and you have to just let it dry you have to just let it dry see the reflection <laughs> that's how shiny it is I mean it's wet too so that's not you know that's part of it also but I'm just kind of pulling some of this up from the edges you're not gonna see the absolute edge of this because um, it'll be under the trees a little bit more blue there we go. All right, we're going to let this dry. 
So while I was letting this dry down a little bit, I sprayed my cardboard here with a little bit of water and picked up a lot of the ink that was left over. Now there's other things happening in here. There's like distress sprays and other things um, just because I use this piece of cardboard a lot. But look at how cool that is. I mean, these are backgrounds that are just using the residual stuff that was left over and not adding any additional color. So this has dried down a bit. And what I'm gonna do now is pull off my mask carefully, move that off to the side, and then we're gonna take our water, this is just water, and I'm gonna spray a little bit where that moon is. Look at what happens. It starts to bleed in and makes it look kinda spooky. What do you think? Look at that, perfect. So now this has to dry completely. Okay, this is pretty dry now. Look at, the, and this is pure shine. Isn't that gorgeous? And of course there are other things on the market that you can use, um, but I love these fireworks sprays. So now we're gonna make some stars. I've got Brilliance Ink here. This is called Moonlight. And it is from Imagine also. It's a pigment ink refill. And I'm just adding some to an acrylic block here. And now I'm gonna spray this with water and not get it on my moon. So I'm doing it off camera. And I've sprayed that. And now I'm going to take a brush, mix it around a little bit so that it thins it out. And we're just gonna flick and we're going to get stars. Super simple. I love using this ink for this purpose. I don't even have this ink pad. I only use it for this. Making stars. Because it comes out really nice every time. And then you let that dry. Here's another one that I did. And instead of using Danube blue, I used Bahama blue, which is a brighter blue. I don't know where it is at the moment, but you get the idea. You can see that it, the blue is much brighter in this one, but it was done exactly the same way. And they're both really cool, but we're going to use this one because this is the one we made today. So here's what it looks like when we put our two panels together. Again, I didn't do anything to the trees, but our sky is super shimmery and beautiful. I love it. It doesn't have to be spooky, but in this case it will be when we're done with our scene. So then I grabbed the Fangtastic Friends add-on. I have this spelled wrong. It's Fang because they have fangs. Uh, the add-on. And I stamped out this fella and then a couple of things from Perfectly Wicked. And they're all here. We're going to color them up. And I use Versify and Claire to stamp them out. Nocturne ink, which is my favorite black ink. And we are going to use a plethora of Zig Clean Color Markers pardon the inky fingers, but when I did, they weren't that bad at first, but when I did the ink smushing with the extra panels, that's when they got covered. So sorry about the filth, but I always say, you know, you've had a good day when your hands are covered in ink. So that's just my motto. If you don't like being inky like this, you can certainly wear gloves. Um, if you decide to do some smushing with the extra ink that's left over. So I'm going to zoom in so that we can really see what's going on. And when you have a lot of elements, it might be tricky to kind of figure out where to start. So I tend to start with the things that are the easiest. And by easy, I mean the items that I know exactly what colors they're going to be when they're done. So for example, the cauldron. The cauldron's going to be black, and I'm going to have green stuff, bubbly stuff coming out of it. So we're going to start there. So I have my black zig. And don't be afraid to turn your pieces as you color them. You don't have to color them straight on. Sometimes I'm going upside down. Um, whatever you are coloring with, um, you know, try to make it on. That's why I have little pieces here so that I can keep them on frame for you, but I can shift them around and, and move them as I need to. So don't be afraid to do that when you're coloring. It makes things much easier. So I'm just using this fabulous brush to apply the color 
and give it some flicking. Now we have gray, which is number 90. And I really didn't plan any of this out. I'm just grabbing colors and making it work. We want our cauldron to have some shine to it. What do we got here? This is light gray. And I'll have all of the items I use listed in my description box. Here we go. I'm just kind of going back and forth. I'm not filling it in completely. I'm leaving a touch of white space here and there, but I am dragging that gray color and a little bit of the black through just to make it a little bit darker because we don't want a silver cauldron, right? Or a dark gray cauldron, we want a black cauldron. There we go, that looks good. Now we need to do our rim. So I'm gonna take the gray again and I'm just gonna go across the bottom here. And then I'm gonna take that light gray, go across the top, but we're gonna add a little something to it also in addition. So now I have fluorescent green, which is a color I don't use too often. Um, but in this case, I think it's gonna work. So I'm gonna just color, actually, I'm gonna just color them completely. My little bubbles, although these two guys will probably get cut off because I'm gonna fussy cut them, not on camera. I'm gonna fussy cut them and to cut those little bubbles might be a little tedious, we'll see, I don't know. So now I'm gonna take this fluorescent green and just go across the top of the cauldron just to kind of give it that reflection, like it's lit up. Now I have May Green. And I'm gonna deepen around the bubbles a little bit. Probably going with another darker green in a moment. Doesn't need to be perfect, it's bubbling, you know? Smooth that out a little bit. Taking the extra ink that I just picked up from the May green that's here and adding it to these bubbles. And I think that we need some more depth. So I'm gonna grab deep green and add a little bit more like that. And then we'll blend it out with the fluorescent green again just so that it looks like there's things happening. It's undulating, it's boiling. That looks nice. I'll bring that up to the camera so you can really see it. Cool. Okay, so now the next thing, I know that the spoon is gonna be made of wood, so I'm going to grab dark oatmeal. Why not? Let's grab dark oatmeal. This is kind of a color that I don't use too often, which means it's the perfect time to use it today. And then I will grab, uh, I was gonna use oatmeal, but I'm looking for beige. We'll use beige and just kind of blend that out. Nice, now you'll notice here that the potion bottle has a tiny bit of that line left. I, I smudged off the line for the liquid that's inside. Ignore this one, I didn't stamp it well. Um, because. I don't know exactly what direction I want the liquid to flow yet. So I removed that line because it's probably going to be this guy that's holding it and he's going to be tipping it. So that line might cut across. So I figured, let me just take it off. This way it doesn't look like it's stuck in the bottle. Okay. Can't forget about our little bat too. So let's do the stool next. We'll make it the same wood that the spoon is. So again, I have my dark oatmeal. Go like this. And you can be as detailed with your coloring as you want. I'm doing this really quickly. I tend to work faster with my zigs than I do Copics. I lost my beige color. Here it is, beige. Um, Cause I tend to go back and forth between colors quite a bit. And I do that with my zigs as well, but I tend to do it a little bit less with the zigs than I do the Copics. Okay, so we have our stool. This is a little dark here. There we go. Cute. What color do we want the cats to be? I don't know. 
Maybe a couple of gray cats. I think we'll do gray cats. And a black hat. Let's do the hat since we know that the, the hat's going to be black. So I've got my black again. I'll probably use a different gray from before. And this way it'll look a little different. What color do we want the buckle to be? That's a good question. Um, I need a gray. Okay, I have Cool Gray 3. This is not from the original set. This is from the smoky color set. You can get them individually from places too, but I do like to get them in sets because they're my favorite markers to work with. So you can see I'm just kind of smudging this around. And now I've got Fog Gray. So this is a different motion from what I did with the cauldron. You can see that here I flicked it Right, we have those very definitive lines, and here I'm smudging it. I'm trying to make it look a little bit more like fabric. Right, we don't want it to look like metal or ceramic or anything. We want it to look like fabric. So, by smudging it, it kind of gives it a smoother look, but you're still able to get um, highlights and low lights and all of that stuff. See the difference? I mean, granted, I use different grays, but you can see that it looks, it has a different texture to it. Okay. For the band, I dip back into the smoky colors, and now I have purplish gray. I don't really want to use like a vibrant purple today. I want it to be deep and dark. So I'm just working on that band. And now I have plum mist. And then plum gray. Actually, this one is darker than the mist. Sometimes it's a little tricky to tell from the caps. Let me go back in with the plum mist and try to pull some of that color out. There we go. That's fine. And now we need to do our buckle. For this, I'm starting with mustard. around the whole thing. I actually kind of like it just like this. I don't really think that I need to do anything else to it. I think mustard is good enough. All right, time for the bat. Let's do the bat. We're gonna do a little brown bat because I think they're adorable. Do you have bats by you? I'm gonna start with oatmeal and just coat the whole thing with oatmeal. This is a technique I like to do when I really want to blend those colors, sort of like what we did on the, the witch hat. When I really want to blend things, I start with my lightest color and just put it all over the entire surface, or if I'm working in sections because the sections are too big, and then that helps to blend things kind of automatically. Now I have mocha brown. This is, again, from that Smoky Colors collection. I really love this brown. I use it quite often. I give it some shadow here and some shadow by the head around the face here and here. And now I'm going to blend that out. And we might not, I pulled a third brown, but I don't, I'm not sure if we're going to use it. We'll see. I don't want to make them, any of the creatures, too dark because our background is already pretty dark. But I also don't want to make them like pastel or anything. That's not, that's not the goal of this card. Blending, blending. I probably could have saturated it a little bit more and it would have blended even better, but this is fine, we're getting there. You see, again, I'm doing that scribbly motion because I don't want them to look shiny. I want them to look fuzzy, um, kind of matte, right? But he has light highlights on him. Okay, so let's go in with the oatmeal here. 
and here I'm going to use my deep brown. And then I'll grab the mocha and blend that out because this is inside the ears so it's going to be darker. And then we'll blend that out. And you can push the color. You can see that I'm pushing this color so that it pushes back into the crevice here where it overlaps the main part of the ear. And then when you're done using a light color, I always recommend that you just kind of draw with it a little bit, scribble, to just get that excess color off. And the bat's done. Okay, so now we have our kitties. The potion bottle is gonna be last after we cut everything else out. I have warm gray three, warm gray four, and warm gray five, and we're gonna start with this kitty here. So I'm gonna do it the opposite way I did the bat. I'm gonna start off with the darkest color this time, just to show you that there are different ways that you can do it. It just depends on what you're in the mood for or what you're most comfortable with. So I'm making this part here super dark with the warm gray five. And I'm gonna go around the face like this, cut into the ear a little bit, cut into this ear a little bit, and then down the body, around the neck. And here's the tricky part for me. So we've got this cauldron and it's bubbling yellow and it's uh, green, excuse me, and it's bright and reflective and you know. So now, I want to add green to the cat. However, I struggle with that part. I do. So I'm going to start adding more gray. And then as we keep going, I'm going to add green to it. So it looks like the cauldron goo is reflecting. So right here, I want to avoid adding color. Because that's going to have a little bit of green. I'm going to make this look round, adding color here. Again, we don't want the cat to look shiny. So we don't want to have lines like we do on the cauldron. Okay. Warm gray three. Adding that to the tail, to the back leg, scribbling this down and blending. And I think that that's where I'm going to kind of stop with the gray and we'll add the green to that area. Look, the worst thing that can happen is I don't love it and then I have to redo it. And don't worry, I would do that off camera. but. You know, experiment, play, see how you want to do things. You know, I'm not great with adding wacky light sources, but if I don't try, then I'll never get better at it. So experiment and play. It's just paper. It's just stamps. You can always redo something or add to it or change it, whatever. But look at that. He's got a little glow and a little bit to this ear. Is it perfect? No. Does it matter? No. It's going to look cute when it's done. I'm grabbing the three again just to blend a touch. Okay, cool. And I'm going to do the same thing with this other kitty, but use probably cool grays. Nah, you know what? I'm going to stick to the same palette. I'm going to do this kitty and then I'm going to cut everything out and including the potion bottle, and we'll get that all ready to go. And we need to add a little pink to his nose. Let's add a little pink. We'll do light pink. A little bit of light pink to the kitty's nose. There we go. Off camera, I finished coloring the second cat. I did a couple of touch-ups, like I had forgotten to color in the feet before for the cauldron, so I did that. And then around all of the images, I used my black brush tip pit pen to just go around and finish off, I was out of focus, sorry, finish off the edges just to make them look nice and 
well, finished. <laughs> and because I'm crazy, I did actually cut out the teeny bubbles that were coming up off the cauldron. So we'll use that. In addition, I colored the bottle. I figured what angle I wanted to use it. And then I just cut an extra piece of cardstock to make an additional ground, which is going to go here. And then this is going to go on top like so, so that we have a place to put our little scene. So I'm going to glue that down. I have my Barely Arts glue. We'll glue that down and then we'll get the scene going. The only thing that I don't like about cutting my own edge here is that there's no stitching on it the way there is on the tree border, the, the tree set here. But that's okay. All right, so I don't want to attach this because I'm going to need to shift things around and, and tuck things under and I don't want it to be down there really well just yet. I think that we'll start with the cauldron. Now we'll start with the bat because then we have one thing that's no longer in the way. And I did kind of lay this out before I started filming again just so that I kind of had a rough idea as to what I was doing. Okay, so our little bat is getting tucked behind the trees, waving to the moon. And now I'm going to figure out if I like the kitty on the stool right here. I think that that's a good spot. I'm going to just leave the cauldron there for a minute and we'll glue this fella first. Be careful of those whiskers. They are very delicate. And the tail. Okay, so we can just lift up this edge a bit, kind of get him tucked underneath like so, just so that he's not too hidden. Okay, good. And look at that green, that glow. It worked. I love it. And there's probably like better, more detailed ways to do it than the way that I did, but I'm okay with this. I, I think it's effective enough. You know why there's green there. It's not like, why is your cat half green? Um, I think it worked out just fine. Okay, so I want to lower the cauldron down, like so. Get up this little bit of glue here. Okay. And then we'll add our little potion bottle. Just like this. Potion bottle. See, the kitty should probably come up a little bit. Mm, or maybe let's move this take this off a second so much for pre-planning right I should have lowered the cauldron a little that's all right we can just re-glue make sure that that looks okay it does I need my tweezers. I don't use these tweezers too often, but in a case like this, it's pretty helpful. That's tipping in there. That's cute. I kind of miss the feet though. It'll be fine. It will be fine. Okay. Next we have our other kitty. Put our little scene back, our trees. Get this guy behind the grass. Just like that. And then we're going to add our spoon and use the tweezers again. Okay. I think I want the spoon upright. Like that. Like he's not quite ready to mix because his buddy is still adding that potion. Okay, and then we have our hat. Which I don't even know if we need anymore. 
Now nah, we'll use the hat. The hat's cute. You can go with or without the hat. Okay, and now we have these crazy little dots that I cut out. I'm going to just pop that there. Hope that's good enough. Try and pick up this other one. And we'll put a dot there. And we lost it. There we go. Oop. Okay. I have a tough time with these tweezers because I use regular tweezers so often with other things, like when I make jewelry. So using these reverse ones kind of make me fumble a little bit. Okay. How are we doing? I think this is so stinking cute. I do think that we need to add some highlights to the trees though. Let's use a white gel pen. Well, we'll keep it on here because you're not going to be able to see it otherwise. So I've got my white Signo gel pen from Uniball and I'm just going to add a little bit. I'm not going to go crazy with this. I just want to make it stand out. And I, I like that it skips a little bit. I'm not really giving the pen even pressure as I go down because I don't want perfect lines. Stay on the right side of the objects. Just like this. And now I'm going to go here on the left because of where our moon is. Again, guys, don't get all caught up in this stuff. This is not for like graduate school in like a major university or anything. We're just we're just making cards. We're just making cards so that we can be creative and cheer up someone if we send them out, I say if because I know a lot of folks have a tough time sending their cards out. There we go. How's that? Now let's add a little bit to the background here just to break that up. That's really cute. That's adorable. just going around the stitching again letting the the pen sort of skip but it's sort of highlighting the stitching just adding a little bit more interest because there's so much going on in the background you don't want the foreground to be totally flat either that's really cute okay now we glue this I'm hoping that I have some time to do a few creepy looking Halloween cards because that's really my jam. I love doing this cute stuff. You know, Lawn Fawn um, always makes me happy, but I also really love doing kind of weird, creepy things too for Halloween. Well, for all year. So hopefully I'll be able to do that too mix up the style a little bit, you know? Okay, I'm gonna stick this on here like so. And I hope that we don't have a lot of glue oozing out. Everything sticks, and then I have a white card base. I am not putting a sentiment on here. I will put one on the inside at some point. That's gonna go right onto our card base. That isn't sticking. A little bit more glue. We go okay so I hope that you enjoyed this card let me know in the comments if you prefer to see 
this type of thing done in real time or if you prefer just like a sped up video with a voiceover. I, I like to do both because I feel like sometimes I like you to hear my thoughts as I'm working on the fly and if I'm doing a voiceover you really don't get that same information. Sorry about that. Because, you know, now I'm doing a voiceover, the card's done, and I already know what I did. But I like when you guys can hear me work things out. And also, you know, sometimes you don't want the speed. This came out really cute. Okay. So that's it for me today. I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope you learned a couple of things, and I hope that you'll give them a try. If you do, let me know. Show me what you've made. Um, and I will see you guys very soon. Have a great day. Be well, stay safe, peace out.